morning again. Uh, welcome to worship at St. Athanasius on this eighth Sunday after Pentecost. Let us begin our worship. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> o gracious and holy God, give us wisdom to perceive you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you. Through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Let us pray. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against, against you, opposing your will, will in, our, in lives. our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, no. and in the world no, you, have no, you have created. We, we repent, repent of the, the evil, evil that enslaves us, us, the evil, the we, evil have done, we have done, and the evil, and the done, evil done on, on our behalf. behalf. Forgive, restore, restore and strengthen and us through our, our Savior, Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ, that we may abide, we abide in, your in your love and serve, and serve only, only your will. will. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who pardons all who truly repent, Forgive your sins, strengthen you by the Holy Spirit, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Now let us join with Rachel as we sing, sing praise to God. As God who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. Spirit of God, search our hearts. Our hearts. Now I invite you, if you are not muted, to check and make sure that you are muted, all except for Ed, who will be reading the first lesson for us. Ed, make sure you are unmuted. Ed, we can't hear you. Ed, you are still muted. There we go. Okay. 
A reading from the letter to the Romans. The Spirit help us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words, and God who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good of those who love God, who are called according to God's purpose. For those whom God foreknow were also predestined to be conformed to the image of the Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom God predestined were also called, and for those whom God were also justified, and for those whom God justified were also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? The one who did not withhold the Son, but gave him up for all of us. Will him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It's God who justifies. Who is he to condemn? It is Jesus Christ who died. Yes, who was raised. Who is at the right hand of God who indeed intercedes for us, who will serpent us from the love of Christ. Will hardship, distress, or persecution, or famine, or wickedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are all being killed all day long. We are all accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to Yahweh and call upon God's name. Proclaim God's deeds among the peoples. Sing to God, sing praise. And tell of all God's marvels. Glory in God's holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek Yahweh rejoice. Keep your eyes open to Yahweh. Watch for God's works. Be alert for signs of God's presence. Remember the marvels God has done. The wonders performed and the judgments pronounced. You descendants of Sarah and Abraham, God's faithful ones, you offspring of Leah, Rachel, and Jacob, who are God's chosen. Yahweh is our God, whose authority covers all the earth. God remembers the covenant forever. The promise God made for a thousand generations. The pact with Sarah and Abraham. The oath to Rebecca and Isaac. The decree confirmed to Leah, Rachel, and Jacob. And everlasting covenant for Israel. I give the land of Canaan, said God, as the portion you will inherit. And now let us join with Rachel as she sings, it is a gift to be simple.
Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in the field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. And then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, she went and sold all that she had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts Help us to pay attention to what truly matters, to the right thing, that we might be able to know what it is that you are about, O oh God. Amen. America's short attention span has been a subject of discussion for many years. A school shooting is front page news for about 10 days. It's then relegated to page two or five or 10. A financial crisis brought about by inadequate regulation of financial institutions brings about changes in regulatory policy until the public is no longer paying attention to it. Then the government and banks remove the regulations. An oil spill destroys natural habitats in Alaska and the Gulf. Companies are fined. Protections are put in place, but as the memory fades, the protections are weakened and the fines are reduced. Well, we're still in the coronavirus and George Floyd moment. So we don't know how many permanent changes will be implemented because of these simultaneous crises. And we don't know how soon or whether the world will forget and move on as it has in the past. But as people of faith, now is the time to think about that. Even if it feels overwhelming, we need to think about it now. Yes, there's a psychological burden to living with all of this. That's why we block out the tragedy of another child kidnapped, abused, and, ab and murdered, because it's too much to handle. It's why we would distract ourselves with Netflix to calm our nerves about simultaneous racial tensions, health crises, and financial threats for just a few hours. We must be gracious with our selective amnesia with so many crises at once. Nevertheless, permanent amnesia is not healthy, is it? A community that is indifferent to and illiterate about the past will misunderstand, misread, and misconstrue the present moment. So in response to Israel's tendency to forget, today's psalm invites people to remember history in a way that empowers them. Keep your eyes open to God. Watch for God's works. Be alert for signs of God's presence. Remember the marvels God has done, the wonders performed, and the judgments pronounced. 
It's important for churches and individuals and nations to remember their history and to realize that there are wildly different versions to choose from. Right after the section that we read today from the psalm, the psalmist goes on to present a version of history that gives content to the invitation to remember that we read. From the promise to Sarah and Abraham, to liberation from slavery under Moses, to entering the promised land, the psalm recounts Israel's history to remind people of God's faithfulness. Walter Brueggemann calls this psalm an exuberant remembrance, crucial in the biblical community and ours, since both communities suffer from systemic amnesia, knowing little of their history and lacking the patience, language, and energy to receive and appropriate the text. Well, we certainly have many opportunities to hear different versions of the same realities these days. Statistics about the number of cases and the number of deaths from COVID are reported every day, but wildly different interpretations of those numbers are expressed. The dangers of kids returning to school are clear, but people disagree about their importance as they discuss the dangers of not returning to school. What matters most when we must decide between two or more options? We can answer that question clearly in retrospect, but in the moment of decision, it's not always easy. Today's psalm issues an invitation, and the parables offer some perspective that can help us make those decisions. It may be easier this year, actually, to understand the parables about the big impact of small things, like mustard seed, about the big impact of invisible things like yeast, of hidden things like treasure, and of valuable things like pearls. Because coronavirus is a small, invisible, hidden thing that is making a huge impact on our world. So how might we view it in light of these parables? Well, in the parable of the wheat and the weeds that we looked at last week, an enemy had sown seed, weed among the wheat that a farmer had sown in his garden. And right after that parable, Matthew has Jesus tell the story of the mustard seed. In this parable, the farmer himself sows weed into his field. Jesus is actually adapting a riddle that had been told earlier by the prophet Ezekiel. Hey. Ezekiel used a cedar tree instead of a mustard plant. Jesus changed the cedar tree to a mustard plant, a shrub, a weed. So is Jesus saying that this is what God did in Jesus? Was Jesus sown into this world as one who willingly let himself be treated as a weed so that we might see the deadliness of thinking that we know good from evil and can be God's servants to weed out evil? And is the parable also a reminder that we tend to ignore small things because they don't seem as important as large things, when the truth is, they are. In God's rule, small things dare not be discounted. When we come to the parable of the yeast, we see a description of the reign of God as something hidden that nevertheless has a huge impact on the flower in which it is hidden. Jesus's audience would have considered leaven unclean and a corrupting factor. The scriptures often used unleavened as a metaphor for the holy. For a community that celebrated Passover every year, the immediate reference for leaven would have been God's liberation from slavery in Egypt when people ate unleavened bread because they were in a hurry. Today we get, might get the same impact if we were to say God's reign is like a virus that doesn't always show symptoms, but can nevertheless infect the whole community. Whoa, God's reign is like that? God's reign is like coronavirus? That image is as offensive to us as the parable was to Jesus' first listeners. But we need to remember, Jesus was talking about how God's reign grows. And in the Roman Empire where it needed to grow, the yeast 
had to corrupt life under Rome's imperial rule in oppressive political, socioeconomic, socioeconomic and religious form of control for all but Roman citizens. But by corrupting it, the reign of God would also transform it. Jesus went about healing the sick, casting out demons, eating with tax collectors and sinners, urging mercy, promoting access to shared resources, and creating alternative households. All of that corrupted the empire's status quo by replacing an unjust hierarchical system that furthered the interests of some at the expense of others with just and egalitarian relationships that served everyone. So if a society is sick, part of the path to wholeness, Jesus is saying, for its inhabitants is to inject corrupt elements into the system to reveal its disease. People need to see how the system is making them sicker. So the question for us is, is coronavirus opening our eyes to see the sickness in our society? That doesn't make it good. It just makes it have a purpose that we need to pay attention to. Next come two parables about selling everything to get something of value. God's reign is a matter of discernment, a choice among many possibilities, and the determination to place our greatest value with God, and by extension, with what God desires for creation. In Jesus's parable, the man doesn't buy the field, and the woman doesn't buy the pearl in order to hoard them, but to promote the common good. You see, it's up to each of us to make that choice to find our highest value in God, to live in such a way that we help carry out God's will for all of creation. Sister Diane Bergant, a Roman Catholic sister, wrote beautifully that the reign of God is the realization of knowing that we belong to God, that we're cherished and cared for, that we've been called to commit ourselves to the noblest values of the human heart. It is the prize that gives meaning to the present, and its fullest delight draws us into the future. It feeds our hungers, satisfies our thirsts, and piques our curiosity. It fulfills our deepest desires and our fondest hopes. So both the psalmist and Jesus teach us to focus on the right things when we're discerning the present moment. The psalmist urges us to practice gratitude and praise to help us focus. So that as we remember, we learn with Israel that life's truth consists not in security, not in power, not in achievement, but in miracles remembered, promises trusted, and futures given beyond our own invention. So we reread our past and our future, and we are liberated for a different present moment. We also need a personal connection with our history that resonates with the memory that is literally in the cells of our bodies. So the psalmist reminds Israel that they are the offspring of Abraham and Sarah, children of Jacob, Leah, and Rachel. They carry their DNA so that their ancestors' history is literally in their bodies. Likewise, the DNA of our ancestors is part of our history. It lies inside us, in the stories that our bodies tell us from memories locked in the cells of our bodies. We don't just repeat these stories because they are our people's stories. They are our story. It's in our DNA. In a few minutes, we are going to do a practice that helps evoke that wholeness by reminding us that we all have masculine and feminine inside of us. That's another aspect of our DNA in our cells. And that's important after the week that we celebrated Mary Magdalene and after a week in which Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez gave an important lecture to Congress. So friends, Jesus calls us the salt of the earth and warns us that our saltiness can lose its flavor. 
we must constantly listen to Jesus' perspective as we look at the world around us so that we are paying attention to the right thing. So now, as we share the peace, let us unmute ourselves. The peace of God be with you all. So and with also you. with you. Also with you. Also with you. Also with you. Peace, peace Grant. Uh, peace, Gertie. 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 Peace,
And I'd like to invite us to uh, make our offering to the website, uh, which many of you are doing, and I'm so grateful for that. Uh, and if you can't figure that out or don't want to, uh, you can send it by US mail to the church, and there's the address. Um, so let us now make our offering as we listen to Rachel sing The Call by Ralph Vaughn Williams. continue with the prayers this morning uh, and we begin by saying together the prayer that Jesus taught us our Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now as we continue muted, let us sing along with Rachel our call to prayer. Thank <laughs> you. 
And now I want to introduce Gertie, who is going to lead us in this visualization um, about Mary Magdalene. So Mary there you go. Mary Magdalene offers guidance for the inner life of the spirit and the outer life of love as the feminine face of God. We've been told to seek the kingdom within. Now we seek to understand the feminine energy of God. Together they are the wholeness of divinity. And we invite you now to use this visualization to live into that wholeness. So close your eyes and feel your feet on the floor. If you're lucky enough to be outdoors and have your shoes off, feel your feet on the earth. Slowly breathe a series of simple breaths with your feet on the floor and on Mother Earth. Feel the warmth of the earth, secure and safe. Breathe again deeply and slowly. Your feet are heavy now and comfortable where they rest. Once upon a time, it was foretold that the bridegroom would have a bride and that goodness would be laid upon the, would be upon the land and healing would come from their union. Breathe in union. It was foretold that the two halves of God would be together as one. Wholeness is our birthright. Breathe deeply and remember your whole and sacred self. There was a time when women knew themselves to be in sacred partnership, to be the sacred complement to the bridegroom, that the masculine and feminine God meet within each human being. Breathe in again slowly. Breathe into a place within your heart, a place of knowing yourself, a sacred partner, a soul partner, as bride and bridegroom. It was foretold. Let that time be now. Let that sacred vessel be me and each one of you. What images or feelings are surfacing for you? Let them come up, rest in them for a few moments as you breathe. As you are ready, open your eyes and come back to the gathering. And let us enter into a time of intercessions and thanksgivings. I ask you to unmute and I invite those who are on Facebook to share your prayer requests uh, and thanksgivings in the comment section um, and invite those of you on the screen to share your prayer requests. What is on your heart? Who is on your heart today? I'll start us off. Um, my daughter Julia is on my heart. She um, just informed me this morning that she tested positive for Corona yesterday um, oh. and I haven't had a chance to talk to her, just got a text. So uh, she's without symptoms, so we're hopeful. Um, and also right before we began, um, John Sexton 
shared that today is the anniversary of his wife's death. So we accompany you today, John, in prayer. As you know, um, my son Phil has been going through a series of a lot of tests. On Thursday, he, they took 15 vials of blood. Uh, and um, tomorrow, he is having a very important uh, MR, MRI of his brain. They're going to be uh, looking at several different areas of his brain. And he also has an appointment with, I'm not going to say this title correctly, it's a neuro um, punctuality test uh, because there's something going on with him neurologically uh, and um, his right side has continued to be painful and he has continued to lose use so <clears throat> they are looking into the possible reasons and we're praying for a diagnosis so that they can then know how to treat so be with phil tomorrow and continually. Thank you for updating us. Pray for some clarity, some diagnosis there. Yeah. I asked prayers for my neighbor. I, I don't recall if I asked prayers last week, but um, he was in a bicycle accident a week ago and, um, you know, had some brain injury and um, mm. other problems. So they're, they're still not sure how his recovery will, will go. Um, asking for healing. Lift up Bats and Gloria. Yeah. Yeah. Grant, how is Amanda? Uh, thank you. Uh, Amanda is now uh, back at uh, the house uh, where her son lives in Manila, and she is um, released from the hospital and is recuperating and resting uh, and doing s some rehab. And so we're extremely grateful for this outcome and giving thanks to God for her continuing progress. Thank you very much for all of your prayers for her and for me. In my household, we're a little divided here. Um, two people tested positive for COVID, two people tested negative for COVID, uh, I don't have any symptoms, and all this started while I was away on vacation. So I've been isolating. Uh, I don't have any symptoms. I feel good. Um, I talked to my doctor who told me if I don't have any symptoms, there's no need for me to test. So I'm a little confused on that one. Should I take a test or not take a test? since I am, um, we do share a restroom and uh, we're doing everything, taking all the precautions. I'm just a little lost on the, should I test or not test? What do you guys think? I would say get the testing. Okay. Test. I agree. Test. test. Peace of mind. Okay. Okay. There's a really good place in um, Echo Park. Uh, I can't think of the name of the company. Urban Health. What is it? Urban Health. Yes, and they're also in Pasadena. They're okay. really not. I've been tested twice there. Their turnaround time isn't very good. That's where I was tested and um, took nine days to get the results. So um, I've heard of others getting results in 24 hours. So. Um, waiting 10 days for the test appointment and then nine days for the results sort of loses the point. Uh, the, the Crenshaw Christian Center gave me results within 24 hours. So that, that if, uh, yeah, that, that would be a good place to go. I also, I you I was could tested. put that contact in the chat, Rachel. Yeah, I will. I was you tested know, at Dodger Stadium on uh, Thursday morning and had the results Friday evening. 
And I know that's closer to you, Louisa. Yes, it is. <coughs> I couldn't understand why Kaiser wouldn't do a test, even on a possible. That that just kind of just, uh, yeah, it, it went through my head like an arrow. But um, I, I guess they're overloaded. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I don't. Well, no, what what's weird for me is that every symptom that they told me to watch out for is every sim symptom that you have for fibromyalgia. So right. that, that's my normal. That's my, you know, that's my normal is walking around with COVID symptoms now. So I, I think it's funny. <laughs> you know, yeah, I know. So everybody's walking around like they have fibromyalgia. I, I feel <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Other prayers that people <laughs> want to share. It looks like Carmini added a prayer in the chat. Yeah, pray. Somebody read that to me because I can't. Um... Pray for France's surgery on rare cancer on the 29th. Ooh. My prayers mm -hmm. are with you. Oh. All right. Well. <laughs> which is what the way I like to look at it. <laughs> Overly dramatic way. In this pivotal time that I have a wonderful community to, to, uh, to help me and guide me and be with me. Thank you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah from all of us, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'd like to pray for the big community of humanity, um, for the wall of moms and everyone yes everyone like them everyone who whose heart is gladdened by them mm -hmm. the wall of moms and the leaf blower dads yes <laughs> <laughs> right on and, amen to that spirit to that to that heart yes mm -hmm. i was so delighted to hear about that it was encouraging in the midst of all of this mm -hmm. Oh, this reminds me of a poem we had to learn when we were in the sixth grade called If. I don't know if y'all remember that one. If you can keep your head around you while all of them are losing theirs. That's about all I remember from the poem. <laughs> really long. We'll pray for that. Yes, <laughs> <It's kidding. laughs> all right. Well, let us continue in prayer with the collect of the day. That was for you, Leon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to China, Brad. Pray for China? Yes, because okay. uh, uncountable deaths day by day. Maybe, uh, I guess, one million people are going to death in China, Brad. Wow. I think. Okay, thank you for that, Robert. <laughs> I invite you now all to mute yourselves um, and for Evan to maybe help that happen as we um, pray the collect of the day. God of mercy, you have blessed us beyond our dreams. You have set before us promises and perils beyond our understanding. Help us to struggle and pray that the perils may be averted and your promises fulfilled. Hear this prayer for your love's sake. Amen. And then this prayer of commitment that I invite you to say as it is true for you. Let us bow to the sacred in all creation. May our spirits fill the world with beauty and wonder. May our minds seek truth with humility and openness. May our hearts forgive without limit. May our love for friend, enemy, and outcast be without measure. May our needs be few and our living simple. May our actions bear witness to the suffering of others. May our hands never harm a living being. May our steps stay on the journey of justice. May our tongues speak for those who are poor without fear of the powerful. May our prayers rise with patient discontent until no child is hungry. May our life's work be a passion for peace and nonviolence. May our soul rejoice in the present moment. May our imagination overcome death and despair with new possibility. May we risk reputation, comfort, and security 
to bring this hope to the children. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now I invite, invite you in your muted state to join Rachel in singing, Guide Me, O oh, My Great Redeemer. Guide me, O oh, my great redeemer. bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The almighty and merciful God bless us and keep us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Father Frank, can I just say something real quick? Sure. Uh, we have an Instagram page for the church now. So if you want to follow us on Instagram, it is Saint A in LA. And I'll put that in the chat really quick and if you need a tutorial about how to do that marissa is available <laughs> <laughs> and I, that would be me <laughs> me too so, uh, and let me add if you have something that saint a should share please send that message or picture to either marissa or me and we will put it in the instagram feed uh, we want to try to get more people following us we have a, a YouTube page now, too. Um, I mean, we've had that, but uh, it's a channel. Um, and uh, I can let you know what that is as soon as I figure out how to tell you. <laughs> All right, here we go into groups. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy.
Here we go. Hi, Frank. Hey, you, you disappeared? Oh, I, hope, I hope nobody got whiplash by my, I was moving people around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, there we go. Thanks, Annie. How are you? Yeah. Well, thank you. In spite of everything. <laughs> in spite of everything. Yeah. Nice to get, nice for you to uh, let us see you during the breakout room and <laughs> enjoy that. You know, it's interesting about Mary Magdalene. I realize I'm in an Episcopal church when they talk about her as a saint, because growing up as Roman Catholic, she was something else. Yes. Uh, uh, a, pro a prostitute, I think that's what they called her. It was a smear campaign. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for Pope Francis for that. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I continue learning a lot about Mary Magdalene and how you know. I, re I remember um, uh, what was that movie and book that uh, sort of dealt with the whole cover up. Um, da Vinci Code. Huh? The Da Vinci Code. The Da Vinci Code, right. Um, but that was sort of a popularized version of it. But I think um, reading Richard Rohr and, and uh, the writers that he put uh, on his site and others uh, continue to learn about exactly what you just said, Ed. Well, that's been how we've missed a very important thing. But you know, during those times, uh, men and women do not mixed together unless they're related or in kind of relationship. Uh, so, so everybody assumed that since Mary is within this group of men, that she's involved in, in one of those, Jesus Christ maybe. That's why the smear campaign. Well, one of the things that, I mean, is an important reminder is that the Mary that was first at the resurrection was not Mary, the mother of Jesus, which I think popular religion has it, but it was Mary Magdalene. Yes. Anyway, enough theology for a break. <laughs> yeah. what, what is your dog's name? Oh, Rusty. Rusty. <laughs> Rusty's a handsome dog. Yes. <laughs> a sweetheart. And right I now. can't hold mine, but um, there he is. Oh, goodness. Oh, that looks so weird, doesn't it? He's my, yes. he's my companion. Oh, oh yes. against the, the background of the church? Yes. It yes. Sort of that was very uh, weird looking. Yes. Kind of psychedelic. Yeah, I like having a dog small enough that I can pick up when he's being a jerk. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Let me do that a little better. There, you there he is. There he's pretty dog. quiet. Yeah, he's, he's got his bone. Yeah, he's happy. He loves being in here. <laughs> he, he does both services. <laughs> <laughs> equally is, as ambitious? Uh, ex uh, pretty much. <laughs> this is the coolest room in the house. It's okay. the smallest wow. room. And it has two air conditioner vents and a ceiling fan. So he loves it. <laughs> well, he's got the nice tile floor, he's, too. Yeah. Right, a nice tile floor. So he spends his whole day here. Yeah. And night. Oh, I, you have your a, I have a mask on the bed there. There you go. There you go. <laughs> uh huh. Oh. I see. All right. This guy wants to go for a walk, so I'm going to take off. But you guys okay, okay, Adam. Okay. See you next week. Bye bye. Be see well. You. Yeah. See you next week. Bye bye. Bye. So, John, what's going on? Uh, and Ed, I haven't Not talked a, to you in a while. Uh, you know. Just chilling, stay out of trouble, <laughs> keeping, uh, stay home. And, uh, you know, uh, you guys are talking about testing, but uh, uh, there's always this misinformation all over the place, just I to confuse know. all of us. So uh, the results are not even conclusive. Well, you may have it, not have it. You may be negative, but you're actually positive or vice versa. So uh, it's, it's just a mess. Uh, I haven't been tested, and uh, and I don't know why I should. Staying safe and away from everybody. So I'm, I, uh, but my age and my hypertension, I'm probably a good candidate if I'm not uh, being safe. So, uh, 
Yeah, it only uh, is like a snapshot in time. And that's the difficult part of it. Yeah. If you don't have symptoms and you get tested, you don't know how long, how long have you had it? And it, there's really no action that you can take if you know beyond what we already know to do. There, there's no treatment to get. There's no reason to go to the doctor. The doctor can't do anything for you. Mm -hmm. So if you have symptoms where your oxygen saturations, you know, you're having trouble breathing or something like that, that's when you need to go to the hospital because the, the there's no there's no treatment unless you're really really sick. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, if it gives her some peace of mind to go and and get a test, but if she's living with people who are positive, that it only means that she's that she's and it comes back negative then that only means that she was negative at the time of the test she could right. be positive by the time she gets the results yes so she's asymptomatic yeah i've been through all of this <laughs> <laughs> and it actually causes a, a great deal of moral distress when there was yes. nothing that i could do about it anyhow so um if i don't have any symptoms going forward even if i have exposure to somebody i'm probably not going to get tested yeah i i have a dilemma because in october my son's birthday and i have a ticket to go okay. it's october 6 but now i'm kind of like should i go because we're so infected here and i don't want to bring sit in the airplane for two and a half hours get to denver where they at and spread something so uh i mean yeah. I, maybe i shouldn't go i yeah. don't know but, but we've been it's hard to, it's, it's hard to know what to do it is yeah. hard to know what to it's do. hard to look very far ahead you know i i think of you know i usually go to montana in september and people mm. ask me and i said i don't know will i go i don't know you know i'll wait <laughs> yeah. i'll wait till september i guess and yeah either i will or i won't i you know i'm <laughs> It's, it's really practice one day at a time kind of stuff. Do you yeah. drive when you go, John, or do you fly usually? I fly because I don't, I don't go long enough. You know, if I was going for a longer period, I would drive because it's a good two to two and a half days of driving. Yeah. But I usually go only, only go for about four or five days and I don't want to spend most of it on the road and, you know, but. I just feel it'll be whatever because I think well if I don't go you know life goes on I'm I'm okay you know I I just yeah. I want to be safe I want people I love to be safe right you know yeah and uh, yeah so other than that I I haven't been tested I've tried to I'm trying to exercise just about every day because I think by God if I get it at least I want to be as healthy as I can be. Right. That's right. You, know, you want your lungs to be healthy. And I said I don't want to go down without kicking. <laughs> <laughs> kicking and scratching and screaming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yeah. they say one yeah. of the symptoms is you lose your sense of smell. Yeah, well, I can't and, smell it. I haven't smelled for 30 years. So and and you <laughs> lose the sense of taste. So so well, far, so good for me. I can eat and enjoy what I yeah. smell. So, yeah. who knows? <laughs> yeah. Very crazy. My wife, my wife used to, because she had a really, really sensitive nose, and she go, she'd always be, "You can't smell that. Can't you smell that?" <laughs> I tell her, there, "There's, there are blessings and curses that go with that." You know. There, <laughs> yes, I guess that's yeah. true. Yeah. But but that's part of the problem though. If you can't smell, that's part of your taste too. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. But otherwise, life is you know life goes on. It's it, time goes fast. Time goes that we're almost to August and. You know. And and this thing so about how is the, the the vaccine. I'm sorry. Uh, I think the the administration is rushing a vaccine because it could be a re-election thing for Trump. And, and I hope they're not rushing it to the, for that purpose only, whether it's inaccurate or not. So it's, uh, that's another crazy thing. We only have to back. How is the eighth uh, anniversary? I, you know, it's, it, it's gone fast. Well, it's fast. And so, I mean, sometimes I think it's only been eight years because it seems like forever. <laughs> It seems like mm -hmm. forever. And then other times, I think it's eight already. I mean, it's just, you know, I got up this yeah. morning and 
it's kind of a, you know, another day, another day. Um, yeah. Yeah. Life goes, life goes on. Let's go on. Those anniversaries yeah. keep piling up. But. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's amazing how fast, how fast it goes by. Yeah. And they're important memory markers. Yeah. Yeah. Robert, you're, you're leaving? No. Um, oh, you want to say something? Uh, yes. Uh, I pray to China because uh, my very concern uh, over the last four months uh, more how started the fraud and, uh, and uh, how to count deaf people, unknown, uncountable death. And uh, recently, uh, CCP, CCP, you know CCP, kind of. China Community Party, CCP, and uh, what the difference is, Chinese and uh, uh, China and uh, CCP, what the difference is, what we think about that. I, I complicated about the China and the CCP and the coming to USA uh, kind of a purpose to destroy world or something and use there. And uh, during this moment, you know, going on the cloud of death, innocent people dying and uh, like torture day by day, no food, no water, something mm. wrong thing going on. Uh, yeah. And uh, so many people dying uh, more than uh, uh, coronavirus, only in the China flood, something going on. I worry about that. What the difference is how to do against the CCP or not against China or oh, complicated. And I pray. For all those people. Mm. Yeah. yeah, we don't hear much about that, um, about the number of cases in China. So thank you for drawing mm. that to our attention. So well, uh, YouTube has a, a kind of a China focus. YouTube has China focus. Uh, such a place that uh, I have a Japanese, uh, uh, Japanese YouTube, and uh, all focused uh, by from Japan world. Uh, <coughs> I am uh, listening all the time, and uh, my suggestion is a very part of a very small thing. But uh, uh, I will. I'm going to change to make a suggestion to USA, little by little, to by English and. Oh, very concerning. Uh, what is the CCP in the past, last uh, uh, 50 years, 100 years ago, studied in the kind of uh, uh, deep state, deep state, uh, like uh, uh, feeling uh, China, all the China group, or Jewish group. Uh, very concerning about the Jewish Christian compared to all the China, uh, very hard group. To, uh, my thinking is uh, still going on a uh, very stronger than China Jewish group. Very concerning about the Jewish. Uh, something going on because the Jewish people are into the already American military, oh, very strong power, I believe, Jewish people, more than Chinese or CCP. I, I, I'm not afraid that USA is good for the future, but our world, including China, another place. <laughs> 
another world is uh, very down, down, down by Chinese power like that. It's no good. But how about the uh, Episcopal Church? What the Episcopal Church doing? And uh, really helping to Chinese uh, Chinese Christian people. I don't really know the answer to that question, Robert. I, th I think there is an answer. Um, and uh, possibly the Episcopal Church website would have an answer to that uh, in terms of, I wouldn't be surprised that they're doing something, but I don't know uh, in terms of coronavirus, um, I'm not at all sure they're doing anything with that. Yeah. So, listen, I'm gonna have to um, head off myself because uh, first of all, I wanna, my my talk to my daughter. Um, okay. Yes, I'm. Yeah. Thank you, uh, exactly. on that one. Best wishes, everybody. Be well. Yes. All right. Say hi to Shaw. All right. Take care. Hey, my dogs are saying goodbye. Yep. <laughs> Mine is ready to end it too. clear which union station we were talking about actually now that downtown. I, I think well she used to run the downtown women's center but anyway she was a really knowledgeable great woman and um and um one thing that they what one thing that that people people do with with them is um mentor with people who are in in like a uh a, a, an apartment or whatever that they've gotten you know, people that have been given apartments and stuff. So I don't know why I thought of that, except that um, I just think that we can all support each other, you know? That's what I was alluding you know, to. And, and, and I'm just thinking about people right now who are, who are being evicted and stuff, or, or, or are, are days away from being evicted. Yeah, I, I thought they stopped evictions in LA, what happened? Well, um, the date's ending for that. <laughs> yeah, the, what? the moratorium is ending. I don't know. And if so it's the six hundred dollars until further notice. Yep, that's right. What? Yep. So um, I'm glad to see Van and Heather. Um, I received an invitation to the. Uh, Los Angeles meeting again for today at two. And um, Grant and um, Annie and I had scheduled another meeting for, for this social enterprise thing that we're doing at the exact same time. So we're not able to be at that, but are you gonna be at that van? Yeah, but I'll be silent. I, I don't have the energy to, to, to carry on. Right. I'm Heather, not, no. not able to. And, and Gertie, I know, has another conflict too. Yeah, I I'm, but, had plans. Maybe, well, maybe, Van, if you could at least uh, sort of keep us posted about. Yeah, I'll try. Yeah, I'll try. Yeah. Yeah. What's the meeting about? It's the Poor People's Campaign, um, which is, you know, sort of the reincarnation of what Martin Luther King did back in the 60s. And this is uh, Reverend uh, Barber and Valerie Cower um, are, are the co-leaders of it. And um, um, this is the... We, we finally, thanks to, Van is on the steering committee for the Los Angeles chapter, and uh, he's helped us at St. Athanasius get connected to that, so. Uh, yeah, send me the link if you want. I think I, um, I don't have anything planned that I, can, that I know of. I, I signed up for the faith-based subgroup. Yes, so, so did I. Seems like a good, good place to, for all of us to start. And I had, um, in my breakout room last week asked about um, the, the question of St. Athanasius joining. And um, I, the uh, facilitator of our room was a guy named Tom and he's on the steering committee. And I actually emailed him this week and he emailed um, a woman named Darlene or somebody who's on the uh, sort of ahead of things and asked the question because it's not, it's not clear what it means. And, how to, to go about doing it. Um, so we're, we're still pursuing it, Van. And uh, well, what was the question? I, was, I was pleased that Tom uh, followed up on it. Right, well, what was the question though, Father? Well, the question is, 
Um, I mean, both how for the church to become uh, a member and what are the implications and expectations when an institution becomes a member? Right. Well, one thing uh, um, directed to your question is they're formulating an orientation packet to do that. Right now, it's not. But, you know, it's pretty easy to get into the group, you know, and, and there's subgroups, as you say, faith group, and et cetera, and other things you can do. So you, you pretty much look right. Left to your druthers, just join. Yeah, we're not. I don't. I don't think it's stopping us from action, um, yeah. but uh, I think it's it's a form of support. You indicated actually that that, that they were seeking to have institutional um, membership and, and support. So, Correct, sir. you know, I'd like to offer that. But um, all right. So, yeah. Hey, Van. Uh, oh, send yeah. me a link, Van. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm running, I. I'm running out to fly. Okay. Yeah. Well, I. Okay. Yeah, I like your, gonna, I, you know, I don't, I didn't mean to shut down the idea that you, you were talking about a people meeting separately, you know, in another group. I don't know. I guess I didn't shut it down or anything, but I don't even know that I have the time to do it. But yeah. I, just, I, I need a place to go where nobody, where those problems are not there. Oh, you know? Good luck. Yeah. Right now we're surrounded, Van. The only place you can go is into your mind and surround your environment. Without yeah. the issue, that's yeah. the only place you got right now is your own and, and wherever wherever that place is, you can't get there yeah. from here. I'm going there right now. Okay, yeah. all right. Right. I'm to go. Okay, all right. Great to see you all. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. bye. Everybody have a blessed weekend. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>